Ladies and gentlemen, dear viewers, I welcome you to the first BR Info Forum, online this time. My name is Jörg Püttbach and I have the pleasure to guide you through the agenda today. We already had this event this morning in German language, but especially for our not German speaking guests, we do it in English today and I say good morning, hello to our partners in North America and Mexico. Um, at first, I want to show you the agenda, what we want to do today. We will start with the introduction of our new BIA Technology Manager Automotive, Dr. Markus Heep. Then we will look at the BIA Group. I will guide you through the presentation of the BIA Group and its uh, locations. After that, I will have a discussion with Dr. Markus Dahlhaus about REACH and about the activities of BIA um, concerning the Chrome 6 free plating. Last but not least, Dr. Felix Heinzler will tell us the newest uh, development um, concerning painting, our new paint shop here, and he will show us the possibilities BIA has now with this painting. Um, during all the time, you can ask questions. Therefore, we have a short tutorial. Um, here you see the orange button with the word Fragen, that's German. There you can input your questions then senden means send and we will discuss all these questions at the end um, of our discussions and our presentations. Please use easy words and easy sentences because I'm not a native speaker and my English is poor. Okay, we start with the first point of the agenda. We want to in introduce you a new member of the BIA family and the BIA team and we are very proud that we could hire a real expert of plating as our new technical manager automotive. As a lobbyist for surface technologies, Dr. Markus Heep will be placed at the interface between design, development and purchasing of the OEM and tier one. But I think Dr. Heep can introduce himself best. Yeah, hello, hello everybody. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Markus Heep. I'm happily married and I have two kids. Since November the 1st of this year, I'm the technical manager automotive of the beer group. I studied chemistry and finished my PhD in chemical vapor deposition technology successfully in 1999. In January 2000, I started my professional career in the research and development department of a big and well-known chemical supplier for the electroplating industry. After two years, I moved to the marketing department of that chemical supplier and became the product manager for plating copper, nickel and chromium on plastic. After three more years, I switched to the coater side and took over the technical responsibility for the electroplating facilities of different plating on plastic suppliers. So much for my career. Essentially, I optimized existing processes, I introduced new processes, planned and implemented the necessary equipment conversions. One of my biggest projects and tasks at that time was building a new plating line. Over that time, I was able to obtain and increase continuously my knowledge in other technologies like molding and painting. I've known beer since I started working in the electroplating industry. What always excited me about beer was the way how they've been combining function and design through electroplating. I decided to submit my application for three main reasons. On the one hand, they regularly roll out new design trends, especially in the areas of electroplating surface technology. On the other hand, they have a clear globalization structure. 
And last but not least, Bia is owner-managed. The general management has a very high technical know-how. These are very good foundations for correct, quick and above all sustainable decisions. Schnelle, richtige und vor allen Dingen auch nachhaltige Entscheidungen. I would like to support designers and product developers in implementing their ideas by offering solutions from the current technical portfolio of the beer group. At the same time, I will watch out for future trends in the industry to ensure our research and development department developing the necessary solutions for tomorrow. In short, my job is coordinating the technical orientation of the beer group with the requirements of the automotive market. For me personally, the attraction of the position lies in the challenges that we are confronted in today and of course those we will be confronted in the future. We are currently affected by the ban on the use of Chromium 6 in our electroplating lines. BIA has been looking into possible alternatives for years and has made good progress. Already today, we are planning to convert all our electroplating lines to follow our substitution strategy. For a specific changeover, of course, we need the support from the entire supply chain. One of my tasks will therefore be coordinating the communication and also going with the changeover scenario to the Chromium 6 free process in our lines and the, in the entire supply chain in der Linie umzusetzen und in der gesamten Lieferkette umzusetzen. Eine weitere Aufgabe Another task of course will be launching new projects. While looking for Chromium 6 electroplating alternatives, we had an eye on several technologies and found quite interesting solutions and additional fields for our research and development department. Although These technologies were not suitable to replace chrome plating, but they are ideally suited to offer a corresponding addition to chrome and of course, we want to develop this added value with our customers. So looking forward to seeing you. Thank you, Dr. Heep. Dear customer, Don't hesitate to contact Markus Heep to all issues of design, innovations, technologies, Chrome 6 free, whatever. He is for you. Dr. Heep will take up his duties worldwide, like he said, because BIA is located worldwide and we want to deal with the worldwide customers. That leads to the next point of the agenda, the presentation of the BIA group and its locations. Today, BIA is a group of companies with a worldwide presence. With three locations in Europe, one in China, or a new location in Mexico, BIA is represented in all major markets. The heart of the group beats in Solingen, Germany. This is where the standards are defined and the innovations are developed, which we then offer worldwide. In Wuxi, in San Luis Potosi, or in Nitra, BIA customers receives the well-known BIA quality everywhere. For this, we use the best available technology at all locations. With a total of 115 injection molding machines in one, two and three K technology, 10 plastic and two metal electroplating lines, BIA meets the requirements of the global automotive customers. All plants are equipped with the necessary testing technology. In addition, there is the established BIA system for testing surface defects, which is based on the trained eyes of our staff in the final inspection department. Environmental protection is a corporate goal for BIA. Saving resources, ensuring material cycles and minimizing waste are just as much part of our daily task as the challenge of climate neutral production. BIA wants to achieve this goal by 2025.
Of course, we are also working on the replacement of problematic substances worldwide. Chromium 6 free chrome plating is already available in many of the BR plates. The Chromium 6 free pretreatment will be installed, tested, and optimized in Solingen from 2021 with a goal to install it in all BR production facilities in the next years. In addition to the technologies and products available globally at BR, there are specializations in the individual plants. So we can plate polyamide plastics in Nitra. And in Solingen, we not only offer plastic parts, but also chrome plated metal components, including complete processing. And from now on, we also offer painted surfaces. We are particularly proud of the youngest member of the Bia family. Our plant in San Luis Potosi, Mexico, through which our on site plant manager Pia Franzen will take you now on a virtual tour. Buenos dias, welcome to Bia Mexico. Please join me to a virtual tour through our plant. Here we're coming to the plating line. It's the largest of the 12 plating lines in the BIA group. And from the very beginning, we'll be able to work with trivalent chrome. This plant has been planned by Patrick Puttbach and we are very happy being able to benefit from his experience that he generated while building five of our plants. I would like to draw your attention to the logistics of this site. With a green field, it was of course easy to plan our routes very short and we have managed to do so between all adjoining departments. The injection molding department will be able to produce within the next few days. We are having a range of injection molding machines from 125 to 650 ton and we'll start with a multi-component process from the very beginning. In the wastewater department, we will of course work according to BIA standards and do batch processing. This will help us to reduce the water consumption and also to recycle raw materials. It might seem state of the art anyway, but here in Mexico, we are very ahead of time with this. We'll start cereal production in April 2021 and also the IATF certification will be initiated in 2021. We're very happy having been able to recruit well-qualified and motivated personnel for all departments. And we're all looking forward to start Thank soon. you, Pia. Mexico is really an exciting project. And yes, we are not yet ready, but we are very happy with the way the things are going. We heard from Pia that tribal and chrome plating is also installed in the plant in Mexico. And that brings us to the next sub subject of REACH and the ongoing authorization procedures for the chromium trioxide used in plastic electroplating. The industry has been dealing with this for many years and it does not cast a good light on the EU, EU Commission that the decision on authorization applications has been delayed for many years. I would now like to talk to BR Manage Managing Director Dr. Markus Dahlhaus. Markus has been dealing with REACH processes for many years. He worked inten intensively on all authorization applications relating to beer. Above all, however, he's a chemist and as such a real specialist in the use of chrome 6 free processes in electroplating. Markus, we already had to deal extensively with alternatives to hexavalent procedures in the authorization applications. The EU Commission has now asked applicants to submit a so-called substitution plan. What does that mean? Yes, Jörg, the substitution plan means that uh, the applicant has to prove that he really has focused also on using alternatives, on uh, testing alternatives and to demonstrate what he uh, will do to uh, substitute hexavalent chromium in the production. This all is caused because last year 
There has been a decision of the European Court in Luxembourg uh, where an, a granted authorization by the EU Commission was cancelled by the European uh, yeah, Court because they said that uh, the, yeah, the authorization has not been based on really checking all alternatives which are available in the market. Okay, and what does that mean for the industry and, and for BIA, special with its worldwide locations? So we have done uh, a substitution plan which has been uh, yeah, influenced or has been uh, put into the, the substitution plan of the CTEC, but also in the substitution plan of the FGK, the German uh, um, organization of electroplaters doing plating on plastics. Oh. Um, and this substitution plan we will execute now, uh, which means we will change all our plating lines within the next four years so that we can offer a hexchrome free electroplating process. So the, the chromium plating process will be a traveling chromium process in, the, in all BR lines in the future. The chrome three chroming. Exactly. And, and, and what yeah, time, what review period um, do you expect for the pretreatment, chrome six free pretreatment? Yes, the chrome tricks free or the chrome free edge, as we yeah. call it, uh, um, is not in the status that we really can say, oh, we can use it today. Uh, we have seen uh, in the FGK round robin trial that uh, this technology is not developed for uh, the plating on plastics industry uh, at the moment. It is, yeah, it, we are on a good way. Uh, but we are not able to, to substitute everything. So uh, I believe we still need some years of uh, development, then we need some years of conversion, and at the end of the day, we will introduce it in, into the industry. However, this will need another eight to 12 years, depending on the, uh, our progress, which we will have. I'm sure we will have progress, but we need time we for need this. Time. Okay. Uh, the change over to Chrome 6 free processes must be coordinated with the customers, with the tier ones and the OEM. How does this coordination work? Well, to be honest, it's more complicated than I thought in the beginning. I just thought, yeah, when we have the alternative, we can just introduce it and everybody will be happy to use it. But uh, we found out in the beginning, we had some problems with the, with the color matching. Uh, so color match was a big topic. When we have solved uh, the color matching or when we had solved the color matching uh, uh, problem, we saw the problem that we have to uh, um, do the uh, PPAP uh, testing uh, and we have to do this through the whole uh, um, yeah, uh, supply chain. And this means a long way of communication, a long way, uh, and this needs time. So, and are the customers yeah. moving with you? Do they follow your <laughs> proposals? So, in the beginning, in in uh, Slovakia, we were directly doing new components with Traveling Chrome, uh, and that was not so hard to do. But when you want to uh, uh, change um, a running project or running uh, article to an, another surface finish, that is um, compl more complicated. But step by step, they are following now. Okay. In their inquiries, some customers request Chrome surfaces that are completely produced free of Chrome 6. Is this realistic? Uh, as I said before, the round robin trial uh, of the FGK uh, showed um, not so good results for all parts. So I would um, recommend to ask for uh, a Chrome free production uh, and to start with the travel and chrome as a final finish but to keep uh, let's say uh, a backfall to hex chrome for the pretreatment that uh, at the moment i cannot guarantee that this will work on all components it will work on some components but not on all components uh, to realize the change to chrome six free processes yeah we have to renovate or build completely new lines Mm -hmm. um, BIA is currently starting, starting to build a new line that is able to work Chrome 6 free. 
what is special about this line and what will it be able to do? So the new line, we call it the BR2 here in Solingen, will be a line which has two pretreatment uh, uh, yeah, um, lines. lines, exactly. Yeah. And uh, one of the pretreatment line is totally hex chrome free. And uh, we are able to run this line with a free program. So that, that means we can optimize the pretreatment according to the needs of the product. And with this technology, we are able to develop the best pretreatment for each type of uh, material as well as uh, the, the type of component, for example, for 2K technology or 3K technology. So this technology, then we can roll out on the other plating lines in, in our uh, company. The, the other topics which we can deal with in this new uh, plating line is, of course, we can do all our spear speci special technologies like the laser technology in that line. We will be able, of course, to do the different surface finishes with uh, satin finishes. And, uh, yeah, and of course, all these finishes will be done with tribal and chrome, but we still be able to produce our beer finish so it looks like our real beer finish, what we can okay. do. Mm -hmm. So beer has all options in the future with that new line, um, but the effort okay. and investment is immense. I, I know that. <laughs> um, is it worth the effort at all? Um, isn't there any other way of producing chrome surfaces? Well, uh, when we did the, um, yeah, the search for alternatives for chrome, we looked into many different technologies like uh, PVD technology. We looked into thin film coating, uh, painting, uh, uh, molding color. So a lot of things where our R&D people made a, a lot of uh, trials and testing and, and so on. But at the end of the day, we didn't find an alternative which is able to really yeah, substitute uh, or, um, yeah, the, the chrome. There is no finish which is like real chrome, like real metal finish. Uh, the, all the alternatives have a weakness in, in, in one point or the other point. And at the end of the day, there is no uh, um, yeah, alternative. And this means if we want to produce the high value final finish, we need to use the chrome plating. And uh, therefore, also in the future, I'm, I'm convinced in the future, we will use chromium plating as a technology for the um, high value finishes. And this, of course, is needed for high value cars. And to be honest, if you look into the global automotive market, you will see that especially in Asia and in North America, the people like real metal finish for the interior of cars. And so we will see it also in the future, I'm sure, for the uh, high value cars. Okay, thank you very much, Markus. Mm -hmm. Markus will stay here uh, for your questions later on. You know you can ask your questions all the time via the chat function. Of course, you can also later contact Marcos or, or our new technology ma manager, which is also named Marcos, um, for any questions to the Chrome 6 free plating. Mm -hmm. Like Marcos mentioned, we are fans of the real metal surface. And although though we believe there is no real alternative for Chrome plating, we deal with complementary surface technologies. The result is a brand new paint shop. And Dr. Felix Heinzler, the head of our development and processing technologies, will now explain you that we are installed much more than just a new paint shop. Hello, I'd like to welcome you to my presentation, One Tool, Different Surface Designs. Uh, I want to give you some more information about the recently installed production line here in Bia Solingen, our paint shop and its opportunities. Uh, our slogan implies different surface designs and high quality surfaces. Um, till now we were only able to provide electroplated surfaces and for example painting was uh, something we need to um, develop through suppliers. Um, so the main task was to 
expand our portfolio by innovative high quality painted parts and to install a paint shop in Solingen, Germany to SOP 2020. Um, the design of the paint shop was focused on or is focused on piano black, chrome effect and of course the laser structuring for ambient light as one of our main production technologies uh, within the electroplating. Um, the coating capacity um, is described with a single uh, paint shop or paint spray cabin. We have two painting positions within the paint shop and therefore we can um, provide about 30 square meter in a single layer system per hour. If we switch to a multi-layer system, we reduce the uh, capacity to 10 to 12 square meter per hour, but we can produce them in a closed loop because of the different um, production line uh, construction. To go into detail to the construction, we have here an overview about the different um, production lines we have in BR Solingen. Uh, you may know the different plating lines, the BR124 here in this picture. And now we have the new production line, the BR Paint Shop, that is installed in this area. To give a more detailed information about the setup, we have a very compact setup for a robot painting shop. Um, we have in this area the parts uh, on jigs given into the production line and here a central handling robot for the positioning of the jigs within the different areas of the production line. And then we have the two paint spray positions and of course the painting robot as well. We have a very space saving round tower dryer that is uh, in this area. It's a special design from the engineering company which built the paint shop here in Solingen. The paint system and the properties are a single layer and multi layer system that is possible within our production processes. So if we have a single layer system, you have a continuous uh, production process. If we want to apply multi layer systems, we have to. Um, turn tasks into the production line and have a batch production um, of 30 jigs within one batch. We have a special design for the paint application so we can use solvent-based paint system as well as hydro-based paint systems, but we have till now no UV curing. From my point of view, this would be a completely different setup of the paint shop. So, no UV curing, for example, for the special clear coat and scratch resistant. But the spectrum of the parts is for the interior and exterior design. Um, as you can see in this picture here, we have the possibility by the robot painting to paint very complex 3D geometries. Um, of course, we are focused on piano black and chrome effect as special high quality surface paint systems and we can apply symbols or ambient light as well on these surfaces as you might know it from our patented um, BR Night Design technology from the electroplating parts. To give you um, an input about the possibilities for the parts we can paint, we have the parts placed on special jigs and the jigs are transported um, on frames by the handling robot through the different positions within the production line. Um, we have a production window of 1400 cross 800 millimeters for the frame to relocate the parts in these areas and a maximum height of 200 millimeters as well. If you have a look on the picture here within the uh, transport system of the production line, you can see that the uh, geometries and the height can be used for very different parts. So the different surface designs from one tool imply that we have an uh, injection molding tool with an ABS as, for example, an electroplated surface and, for example, polycarbonate in the background to apply ambient light. For, from our point of view, it is very simple to switch to a painted part to increase the different surface designs. So if we, for example, have, um, for example, this quattro batch that is an electroplated part, laser structured and backlighted, or these door trims, we can increase the different surface designs with one injection molding tool 
just by switching the production technology. So for example, we have the electroplated part with the uh, laser structured ambient light line in this area. We can switch to, for example, chrome reflection systems as a painted part. And of course, we can apply different piano black um, systems as a high gloss surface or for example, the satin surface piano black as well. Of course, all these parts have the possibility to be laser structured and therefore the ambient light package um, is functional as well. We can do this for the door trims and of course for the different badges, buttons, symbols, this is also possible. So we increase our production portfolio by um, a large field of innovative high quality surfaces, but we can also focus on the well implied production technologies we know from the electroplating, for example, the laser structuring, tooling and injection molding. So that's uh, some basic information about the painting shop here in Solingen. Now we switch to some pictures and a small video to give you a detailed impression from um, the setup here in Solingen uh, as first in place. Thank you very much. After the program has been selected and approved, the components are moved into the system on the product carrier's objects. The painting window is 1400 x 800 mm. The components typically molded in black PC ABS can be painted for both interior and exterior applications. The central handling robot picks up the product carriers and guides them through the process steps of the system. The first step is cleaning with dry ice, which is carried out by the robot itself. The handling robot then places the carriers on the two positions of the painting booth. The paint shop can process both solvent-based and water-based paint systems. Various mixing and dosing stations are provided in order to enable the most efficient possible process even with multi-layer paint systems such as chrome effect paints. In this way, an effective paint change can be used for batch production in a short time. After painting, the handling robot is in demand again and carries the painted product carrier from the painting booth via the evaporation zone to the drying area to cure the paint. In accordance with the beer philosophy, the system is highly effective from an environmental point of view. The system works completely wastewater free for the most part of the production in air recirculation mode and uses regenerative afterburning to clean the small amounts of exhaust air. I think especially the combination of electroplating and painting gives us and you new possibilities. And we are sure that our high skilled and motivated team around Felix Heinzler will guarantee the performance our customers are used to. Thanks to Felix, who is now here together with Markus Dahlhaus and me to answer your questions, which you still can ask. Additionally, we translated some questions from our session this morning into English, so maybe that's also interesting for you. Markus, a first question mm -hmm. to the reach, uh, yeah, to reach. Um, will the OEM accept, accept a scenario where we mix parts made by Chrome 3 and Chrome 6 in one car? I hope so, yes. Uh, we, if we see today the performance of Trival and Chrome, the color of Trival and Chrome, uh, it's very, very close to hexavalent Chrome, the color of hexavalent Chrome now. And um, there is, for example, Volkswagen 
uh, as the first OEM who has made a standard where you can see which uh, deviation of color is allowed on uh, one assembly in, in a car. And um, this really helps us to uh, really mix also parts on a car. So I hope that uh, some more OEMs will go this way and they will help us to introduce a travel on chrome. Of course, we will have to measure the color, we will have to look in, diff in, in how it looks like in different light scenarios. However, at the end of the day, I'm sure it will be possible with the new travel and chrome technology. Okay. We talked about the substitution plan and the, the, the different um, things we have with uh, the uh, plating and the pretreatment. Mm -hmm. And here's one question. Is it possible that uh, the EU will grant different authorization periods for the coating and the pretreatment? Well, um, I'm not... Uh, um, yeah, um, I cannot look into the future. And uh, if I look uh, what originally was written in the, yeah, in, in, in the text we received when we started authorization, it was said there is one authorization period or review period for one use. So uh, usually the plating on plastics has been uh, yeah, seen as one use. However, now we see that the pretreatment and the electro plating uh, has yeah, two different uh, yeah, speeds for the alternatives. So at the end of the day, I'm sure we will introduce the uh, alternative tribe and chrome much faster than the pretreatment. And so I believe the European Commission will follow this, uh, yeah, this way. Okay, different review periods this means or, or other kind of regulation that means different. Exactly, time they, they will give us different time schedules yeah. for the pretreatment and for the electroplating. Okay. Um, REACH is a European regulation. Mm -hmm. Now we are uh, located in Mexico and since uh, a lot of years in China. Um, do we have to take care about REACH in China and in, especially in Mexico? Um, there is not this pressure from the governments. However, I believe if an alternative is available, if the alternative leads to exactly the same good results so from quality-wise, we should introduce this uh, yeah, environmentally friendly technology. And so we have done this already. We have Travel and Chrome introduced in our lines in China. And we also have installed the Travel and Chrome in Mexico. So it's not only a question of uh, yeah, pressure by governments. It's also a question of our own wish to introduce uh, environmentally friendly technologies. Okay, here we have one viewer yeah, who thinks that there are patented solutions for the pretreatment and he asks, um, what is the chrome plating industry doing to ensure that the development of a chrome-free pretreatment does not end with a monopolist supplier? Mm -hmm. I personally believe that all the alternatives that we can see now for the etching, or most of the alternatives, they are very similar, it's so they are very close to each other. And at the end of the day, the development is not finished yet. So um, I, I believe that there will be uh, different um, technologies, but these are very uh, similar to each other, so that at the end of the day, there is no big difference for me as a, as a plater if I use a process of that supplier or the other supplier. So I believe there won't be a, a monopole. Uh, we will have enough suppliers okay. which are able to supply different technologies leading to the same results. And in the new BR line, we can test all of them. Exactly. That's the advantage of this mm. line. And I, to be honest, I believe today there is not a single process which fulfills all our demands on the, on the chrome plating on plastic or the etching process. And, and we will see later on a mixture of all will be the solution. Okay. So I have uh, some questions to our new paint shop. Um, okay. Um, here one question is, there are many suppliers of paint finishes on the market. 
What does Bia think it can do better than the others? I think we, we have to see it. We can compete to them, uh, but we have a very special uh, paint shop technology. It's very flexible. And I think we have the advantage that we are um, experts in injection molding and tools. Uh, so we can set a good base by the uh, raw parts. Yeah. And then we can add our uh, surface qualities on the one end in the uh, electroplating. And on the other hand, we need to develop special treatments for the painting parts. Are the demands to the raw parts uh, for painting the same as they are for uh, electroplating? I think they can be combined. There are special parts that are requested in painting and other parts still are requested in electroplating. Um, I think we, from our side, can choose the efficient way to produce different parts with nearly the same surface. If we have a look at chrome reflection as a paint system, we can apply it to um, the parts that are better painted. And if we have a look at, for example, uh, Silver Shadow original chrome, we can apply it to the, um, let's say, high quality parts that need a cool touch surface, uh, the quality we know. One question asks, what are the major differences between painted and chromium plated <coughs> surfaces? The cool touch When effect? When would you recommend what? Oh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think from the injection molding side, the materials are nearly the same uh, and the tools are also the same. So this is the same base. Um, from the painting side, um, we need to secure uh, a good adhesion generated by the raw material. In the electroplating, everything must be covered and therefore uh, corrosion resistance is a topic. Um, if we have a look at very complex parts with... Uh, let's say, inner surfaces that needs to be covered. I think the painting will have some advantages by the spraying. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, we can choose from our point of view the best production process and maybe give the first, uh, the uh, tier one, um, an opportunity that we say this part is a good painting part, this part is a good electric plating part. Have you compared the costs? They are comparable, let's say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if you have a three-layer based system, it's uh, nearly the same than the electroplating. It very much depends on the cycle times and let's say the, the um, number of parts that you can place on the jigs. Okay, so here one question comes to the capacities. How will be assure sufficient paint capacities when higher volumes are requested, especially concerning three-layer? surfaces? I think uh, we, we already have this discussion and we need to switch sides. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the technology we implemented into the paint shop is very flexible, but it's not a serious production optimized process. But on the other hand, we are able to um, triple the capacities by building a new paint shop with the same technology, use this paint shop as a teaching area and let's say copy it to the production side and therefore generate yeah, several qualities on uh, the teaching area and then a good serious production. Okay, thank you. Here's one question to the uh, technical manager automotive. Um, BIA is known uh, for technical leadership uh, in innovative surface finishes. In the past it was mainly electroplating and now we start with paint with painting um, what is the role of the new technology manager automotive in relation to the painting <laughs> very i think it's it's uh, similar i i believe that bia will uh, create or develop also a leading position for special paint technologies so um, as, as felix already said um, our our uh, paint line is very flexible, and we want to develop new technologies with painting, which uh, which combine paint with our uh, existing yeah, know-how of laser technology, uh, and of course we want to combine uh, the paint technology with the with the plating technology. And I see a lot of synergies to create a, a new 
yeah, a value proposition also for our customers to create more interesting technology for the final customer, which is yeah, we all, because we are driving a car. And if BIA is creating a new technology for uh, uh, the use in cars, then uh, this is where we want to go. And therefore, we need our yeah, uh, manager for, for the technology. And he has to explain what BIA can help or where BIA can help the OEM to generate more fun with a car, with the surface in the car. Markus, you already gave a statement for real chrome plating yes. before. Here's a question in that direction. Um, how do you see the market trends? Painted parts with chrome effect or IMD in mold decoration parts versus traditional chrome plating. Do you think chrome plated parts will decrease? Um, it depends on. Uh, we have to generate ideas for chrome parts in the future. So. Um, um, yeah, Felix and, and me, we are discussing several <laughs> times about uh, how can we use uh, 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 the other technologies to uh, uh, generate more chrome parts. And then we said, no, we don't need the other technologies to get generate more chrome parts. Chrome is, is a core surface finish for, uh, yeah, for uh, surroundings in not only in cars, but also at home, you see a lot of chrome painted parts. And at the end of the day, chrome has to be developed to a new or yeah, to, to a, a new level, uh, integrating more uh, technologies. One is, of course, the ambient light. That is very important. But also things like uh, uh, touch and, uh, um, and, and uh, touch sensitive uh, finishes or we have some uh, other things where we can develop chrome to the next generation chrome. And this in combination with paint, I think there is, there is not less chrome in the future, but different chrome in the future in the cars. Okay, here comes one question. Do you plan install a paint line in China or in Mexico? I think that's maybe a question for me. Mm -hmm. um, like Felix said, um, we have here now our first uh, paint shop. We think it's a, it's a very good one. We have a lot of options with that paint shop. We will have our experiences. And of course, if the demands are there, we are thinking about an, another line or a, an additional line um, in our other plans, wherever it is needed. So that's the answer maybe for that. Uh, uh, last question to the market was if we are planning in Mexico to also attack the um, uh, American, North American OEMs and not only to follow the European and the German OEMs. I think that's also maybe a question for me. Um, uh, we already have a sales team in Mexico and it is of, of course it's a goal uh, for Mexico not only to work for the for the German or European first tiers or, or the, uh, the OEMs. Also, we want to go to the, to the OEMs. So what is a, a, a big thing for us? And of course, we need time to develop that relation. Okay, I think that's all questions for today. Thank you for joining the first BR Info Forum. We hope you enjoyed it. Please give us uh, two more minutes um, of your time for a short survey which you see right after my last words. You also will find this info forum in our new digital beer report, which we'll, we send to you next week. Take care and bye-bye.